can be here. This guy's been out on the front lines trying to protect the last wild herd of bison we have on the planet. Um, what's going on out there is truly outrageous. And I'm really excited for him to be able to be here to give us some more information about that. Um, these guys work on a shoestring budget. They really operate with not a lot of money. They're super effective in what they do. Since they've been involved, the kill of the wild buffalo has re been reduced dramatically. And uh, it takes true activists on the front lines uh, to get that work done. So um, I'm really proud to uh, introduce um, a true eco-warrior and uh, someone that keeps his feet on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the world famous Mike Meese. So what's it all about? There used to be anywhere from 30 to 60 million buffalo that roam continent North America. Um, we started wiping them out as the white settlers, they called themselves, I like to call them the white conquerors, landed on this continent. They learned how to live here by the First Nations people. And then once we figured out we could do it by ourselves, we started killing them off. And in that process, wiping out all the things that they lived off in harmony on this earth with. Um, we knew the stories of, there was a general back in the day, General Phil Sheridan, who was in charge of killing the Native Americans. And he said the buffalo hunters have done more to wipe out the Native Americans than any of the Calvary's efforts because they've removed their commissary and their way of life. As the progression of slaughter went to the West and kept growing, we heard stories of how the train was invented and how people would sit out in front of the train and just shoot buffalo as they traveled across the country for no reason, no respect, no reverence. And the slaughter continued and continued. Well, finally, about the mid-1800s, the U.S. government sent out a, a scientific expedition to see what was up with these bison. And at that point, they looked and looked and looked and couldn't find any. And finally, they found what was the last 23 buffalo in what is now known as Yellowstone National Park. So about that time, the government felt guilty and they sent out the U.S. Cavalry to stand guard of these last 23 animals. And um, basically, um, they started conservation efforts to progress to save these animals. They far finally started the first national park, which was Yellowstone, and it was originally earmarked to protect the bison. Um, about this time, a, a visionary that was with the Salish Kootenai tribe up in northern Montana had started to see the slaughter coming, and he would go out to the killing fields and start to gather the calves and the orphans and start his own herd on this reservation. So this, finally, Mickey Pablo started to see that the U.S. government was going to do something positive for the buffalo, and at that point he offered 21 buffalo to Yellowstone National Park to increase genetics, give them a little more viability, and they had the Lamar Valley Ranch in which they brought in buffalo. Also a guy named um, Goodnight, her, yeah, from the Goodnight herd down in Texas, this guy named Allard donated two more. So hence the naivety, I love that shirt by the way back there, um, the naivety, oh that's right, good to see you. The naivety of, um, the time, they brought in domestic cows and fed the calf buffalo domestic cow milk and hair started the problem. Brucellosis, a cattle disease that was brought over from Europe, was at that point given to the Yellowstone buffalo and hence the entire Yellowstone ecosystem. Um, now brucellosis is a non-life threatening, non-fatal non disease. Um, it was basically has to be transmitted through an aborted infected fetus. So they expect a vegetarian cow or a vegetarian buffalo to walk up and ingest the afterbirth of an infected fetus and this is how the disease is supposed to happen. Obviously, this has never happened in the wild. And this whole slaughter is based solely on one study that was conducted at the Te Texas A&M University where they took the disease, rubbed it on their nose and genitals three times a day. Guess what? They got the disease to transmit. 
in the wild, this has never occurred, and a living science experiment is going on as we speak in Teton National Park. Teton National Park is abutted to Yellowstone on the southern end, and they were only allowed to open that old park if they honored these grandfather grazing allotments that exist within the park. So for the last 45 years, they've had these quote unquote diseased buffalo intermingling with the holy cows and there's never been a case of transmission. Another very ironic contrary to all this issue is that the elk have the disease. The elk have given the disease to all three states surrounding Yellowstone National Park, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. They've all lost their brucellosis free status in their cows, which is what this hyponesteria and slaughter is all based on. They've regained their status within a year, and it costs less than a million dollars. So here we're spending, and these are all our taxpayer dollars going to this issue. We're spending in the neighborhood from three to five million dollars to protect these holy cows over the hype and hysteria that this could even happen. And yet the one animal that has transmitted it are not even in the equation. Now why is this? Well, elk have a, have a major thing in, in the United States where in Montana, everyone's an elk hunter. That's how people live. That's how they survive out there. And um, basically, if they ever wanted to go against the elk, we would have the NRA, every hunting lobby and every hunting concession out there protesting. And unlike us, I don't think that they would take a vow of nonviolence. I think they would be out there with their guns. And so also your large track landowners, ranchers, are given elk permits. So then they sell them to trophy hunters and they make on average five to 10 grand per, per um, hunting tag. And so they don't want to divide and conquer their own base. Um, <clears throat> again, there's never been a case of the buffalo transmitting this disease. Now to confuse things more, the Montana Department of Livestock has roped in five agencies to go along with this slaughter. We have, on the federal level, um, the United States Forest Service, the United States Park Service, APHIS, the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, and the two state agencies are the Montana Fish and Game and the Montana Department of Livestock. But for some bizarre reason, the De Montana Department of Livestock is calling all the shots with these agencies and basically directing and guiding this whole slaughter program. Um, number one, the problem with this, these guys have no education or background in wildlife management or wildlife biology. Number two, they have the ultimate conflict of interest to even be involved in this issue in the first place. The last thing as far as facts that I think are very important to understand about this issue is there are now 500,000 bison in the United States. They're in every state in the United States. You can see them up in Golden Gate Park. But of those animals, less than 10,000 are genetically pure in what we call, all the rest are what we call beefalo. They're mixed with a cattle bovine gene, but you can't physically look at them and tell the difference. They all carry the characteristics of wild bison but they're not wild bison. And that's why the Yellowstone herd is so important and so significant. Because of those less than 10,000 genetically pure animals we have, these are the ones that have never been caged in, fed, domesticated. They've been able to be wild and they're the last descendants of the contiguous 60 million that used to roam this continent. So they have the knowledge, the wisdom of the, of the old buffalo and they still carry that to date. So what's going on out there? Basically, the, we're out on the road right now because in the summer months and in the early fall, they don't dare kill the buffalo because three to five million tourists come to Yellowstone National Park to see these animals. So obviously, if they were killing these animals in front of the tourists, this thing would be over by now and, and we would not have to be here in front of you today. But unfortunately, they do continue. So we have a table inside the park starting in June till the first week in September. I think it's Labor Day weekend's the one that.